pray for her and I ask the Lord to touch her. Brother Davis needs a touch. They need a miracle. And, and you know, that if you believe God still does miracles. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in that. Yeah. They need miracles. Sister Viola Dixon needs a miracle from God. Bill Dixon needs a miracle from God. I mean, these are people that's been in our congregation and said, you're our saints. They just need a touch of God. Sister Hackworth, she needs a miracle from God. Yeah. And I talked to her son the other day. He, she's just falling. And, and I, I want God to just begin to strengthen their legs, strengthen their bodies, strengthen their bones. And, and I, I just want God to just do a great and a mighty work in our elderly people here in our church. And, and God just restore them, refresh them. And don't you believe God can do that? Yeah. Yeah. He can do that. Sister Dawn, Sister Jewel Ison, her husband Don, they had to take him and fly him out to Lexington. He had surgery. And he needs he needs God to just touch his body and bring healing completely into his body. Larry Joe, he needs a touch from God today. He needs a miracle. And I'm telling these are people that need a miracle in their lives for God to just move and do a miracle. And, and I don't want us just to take it lightly and say, well, you know, they're getting on. And they're getting on and maybe they ought to just go on. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I believe you can lead this world in what you're doing. If I'm just up here singing, God could just take me on out. How many believe that? And I believe that God, as Brother and Sister Davis has been so faithful, Sister Hackworth has been so faithful, to this church, and they have sat right on these pews, and and I ask you just to touch, just ask the Lord just to touch their bodies. I asked you to ask the Lord to do a miracle in my dad. He had a bone scan uh, Thursday morning. We don't know the results. I know the results when I go with him Tuesday. So I ask that you touch, ask the Lord to just touch him. They did a biopsy, and it was cancer, and we're praying that it's just not anywhere else. But I'm asking you to pray for my dad. And he is a visionary. And he was a visionary for this church. And he stood and he brought this church where it needs to be. This school where it needs to be. And I know that my God is faithful. How many knows that? God is faithful. And so I'm asking you just to lift him up in prayer. Ask the Lord just to touch his body. Whatever we have. And maybe you have a need this morning. Somebody. Anybody else? My brother-in-law. 
triggered his own retardation. And he can be saved and he can be saved and he can be saved and he can be saved.
Imagine what good health in the eyes of God is. Glory to God. I mean, good health. No bitterness in his eyes when he was a hundred years old. Even as your soul prospered. See, there's a stipulation in that. Even as your soul prospered. And he's taken us this morning. He said, you want your soul to prosper. You look back at the cross. You want to look to him who no sin became sin that you might be made to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's in. Nothing you have to earn. Salvation is grace through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's nothing we can add to and nothing we can take away. He does it all. And our faith, our confidence, our focus, our hearts needs to be turned back to the cross to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the blood, to the stripes, to the chastisement. Let's take them all in this time. Let's expect to receive them all. He not only saves, but he gives. And he does it all in one fellow swim. Everywhere in the Bible, you see, they were made home. Everybody he touched was made home. They touched the him with his garments. He is garments. And he's made home. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's get thanking that way. Just look at Jesus. Just look at the cross. Look at the blood. That's what he's telling us this morning. That was more than five minutes. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
We love you. Amen. Jesus loves you. Good to have Don with us. Marlon's yeah. over down in there. Lord. I was going to sit back with us. Kind of, I guess, quill to the spirit. Uh, I learned, if I didn't learn anything 13 years ago in this church, if I didn't learn anything else, I've learned in the last 13 years to follow his lead. He has never, no matter how strange the situation might have been, he left me alone. He's never led me any place in the last 13 years. He didn't give me a way back. And this church this morning has proved that he's brought me back. Because of what Eric said, Mike said, and two or three others have said, it has really hit hard for me because this past week I got some really terrible news about my health. And I, every test that I had run came back bad. I gotta start taking insulin, going from pills to insulin. I'm going from high blood pressure to higher blood pressure. Uh, my cholesterol is terrible. Uh, so got arthritis really bad all over. I mean, I could sit and probably go through a bunch of stuff. All of you probably have the same problem. And when I came home from the doctor, I went into my bedroom and I laid down and, and I, all the way home I've been thinking, you know, it seems like it just doesn't seem right. Seems like it just doesn't hardly seem fair. And I went into my bedroom and I laid down and I prayed and I said, Lord, whatever the outcome is, whatever this next week or two leads to, God, I know you're in trouble. And I really and truly don't care. Because you are in charge. And if you see fit for me to leave this world in the next 10 seconds, I'm gone. I'm ready. If you see fit for me to stay a while, I'll stay. But I'm putting it in your hands and I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to worry everybody else around me about it. I'll just learn to live with it. And I'll ask you to touch me and heal me. I raised my left arm above my shoulder for the first time in about a week. Right back there just a few minutes ago. I have my Victory is one. He is risen. 
same thing. They are going to stay in the huts. They're going to celebrate the feast of the tabernacles. And when they, they eat under that tent, they sleep under that tent. And as they're laying there at night, they can look up through those uh, branches and a bamboo and what all the stuff they put over for a covering. And they can see the stars. You know what? It's a reminder of God's faithfulness. Come on. Are we going to have problems? Yeah, we are. Just like Donald was talking about. That's, that's bad news. But listen, the, the finished product is we're all going into eternity, right? We're going to have a new body. The Bible tells us we're going to have a new body. It's not made like this one. It's made like the one that God originally gave Adam that's supposed to live for it. No pain, no suffering, no sorrow. But today, as Billy Ray said, is when we need to celebrate. Eric, Bar, John, Billy Ray is preaching, and we're still sitting there like, I want you to know that God can meet every need that you have. To be festive, to dance, to assemble for rejoicing and celebration. Do we have bad times and tough times? Yeah. In the world, you will have tribulation. But what did Jesus say? Be a good cheer. Look at your neighbor. Be a good cheer. I'm going to look down at the both teeth that you have this morning and say, Be a good cheer. Jesus overcome the world. He has overcome. Right? And if the grave is overwhelmed, I've been wrong. Victory has been won. He has risen. Spirit, and those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was 
not yet in heaven because Jesus was not yet glorified. So it was just so strange that Jesus, during this celebration, he stands up and if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. Yeah. He's going to give us rivers. Rivers. Come on, look at somebody. You still just ain't excited. Rivers. Rivers of living water. Right. Okay. Now come on, let's just celebrate him. I'm not going to tell you how. Already told you what best you are.
craft fair here on the craft fair here on November third. Um, we are still looking for some people to rent tables. The cost is ten dollars, and then they get the proceeds of the tables. Right now, we've got about ten vendors, and we'd like to get fifteen to twenty vendors. So, if you know anybody that makes crafts or sells anything like a celebrated home or anything like that, tell them to get in touch with us. Also tonight, we will be having new service at Seeds. Is this going to be out here in the parking lot? If weather permits, we will be out in the parking lot. But if not, we'll try to fit everybody into the big room in the foyer of the church. Okay, so don't forget that. If you're a real crafty and you don't have a bunch of stuff, just get you a table and, uh, and sell that stuff, I'll tell you. Don't forget Monday night, ladies have the Bible study and prayer meeting. It's, it's fabulous. I mean, they, they study the Word. And then they pray. And, and, uh, so don't forget that that's on Monday night at 6 o'clock. Sister Emma Holland's old dad, she's sick today. So I asked you to pray for her and ask the Lord just to touch her body. And on Wednesday night at 6.30, we have prayer service. And we're teaching. I'm teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. So I want you to come out and uh, here we're teaching about the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to hear everything else. Let's, let's get the fruit of the Spirit living inside of us. And then God can do some great things in us. And we believe that. So, so don't forget that and remember that.